Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our third Sunday matinee of the season here at the 2023 Hypus Institute Festival of Concerts. Welcome to all of you here in Francis Auditorium and to those of you who are joining us on Facebook Live and on YouTube. Now, there is so much that happens here at the Hypus Institute that sort of is, goes on beyond these four walls here of Francis Auditorium. Here during week three, uh, it has been a pretty active week where we had our final concerts yesterday by the junior division, which means that there was music happening on our South Market stage from between 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. yesterday, which barely gave us enough time to get under the Hootenanny tent to hear uh, Hoot Fraser and Haas and all the wonderful uh, student performers in our Heifetz Hootenanny. We had a fantastic evening for that. In between, we've had our very first Heifetz Institute school fair. We've had uh, representatives from 14 different colleges and universities um, visiting with students and telling them all about their programs from their junior pre-college programs all the way to graduate programs and something we've never done before at the Heifetz Institute. At this very moment, uh, the, one of our great cello faculty members, Timothy Eddy, is wrapping up a master class. That's where Nick Kitchen is right now. Um, he's conducting with students in both our senior and junior division. We are welcoming in our second session junior division students. Some of them and their parents are with us here in the auditorium. And that all leads up to the most important event of week three, which happens today. The raffle. I know this is a shameless plug, it's true. Um, but at intermission, should you care to either pony up one ticket for $5 or three for $10, you stand an excellent chance of winning. Uh, um, either a dinner to Zinadoa or a Blue Point $50 gift certificate, and all of the names will be thrown into a hat for our Here and Now concert series. That's all to come. Uh, and our first half and our complete program today, a chance to welcome a lot of our students playing solo for the first time this season. And there'll be lots more of that happening next week as well. But I'll tell you about that at inter intermission after you've purchased your raffle ticket. We'll do a drawing at the end of intermission and uh, hope that you will enjoy the concert as much as I intend to. Thank you. Howdy, y'all. <laughs> My name is Ellie Kennedy, and I'm from San Antonio, Texas. Today, I will be performing a piece that hits rather close to home. It's called Louisiana Blues Strut by Coleridge Taylor Perkinson. Although I've never visited Louisiana myself, I've heard that it's very similar to Texas, just with a few more alligators. <laughs> Written in 2001, this piece is often performed as an encore, but today I have the opportunity to be performing it in the beginning of the program instead of an encore. <laughs> um, yeah, although I've never visited Louisiana, it's a, very, uh, it's a very nice place to be, I would imagine. This piece has always meant a lot to me ever since I've started working on it because it has never failed to make me feel as if I'm back home, driving a Ford F-150 down a country road while getting absolutely demolished by mosquitoes. Today, I want to welcome all of y'all to the home I come from. Thank you.
Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here. Uh, my name is Aidan Garrison, and this is my second year here at the Heifetz Institute. Today, my amazing collaborator, Mickey, and I are excited to present to you the second movement, or Barcarolle, from the Sonata in B-flat by Henri Vuitton. Does anyone know what Barcarolle means? I think I see one or two nods, one or two. So translates to boat song, which always makes me think of like a gondolier in Venice. And this piece is so beautiful, I always imagine the gondolier, he's pulling, he's pulling his gondola, right? And he sees on the side of a canal is someone stunningly beautiful. And he just he feels the need to burst into song to serenade this beautiful woman or man. And when I was thinking about what pieces to bring to the Heifetz Institute, I thought this would be perfect. Because, you know, it's summer. And love is in the air.
Good afternoon, everyone. Um, <laughs> my name is Anna, and I'm from New Zealand. And today I will be playing the second movement of Concerto in D major by Brahms. So Brahms is very widely known for his lullabies. And I am also very fond of these tunes because my mother used to sing them to me while, uh, when I was a child. And when I first heard the second movement of this concerto, this was instantly what I was reminded of. And it kind of stirred a feeling of comfort and nostalgia at the same time. Um, and I think the best way I can describe it is a lullaby for a mature audience. Thank you.
Thank you so much for coming. My name is Amy, and today me and the wonderful Allison will be playing the cello concerto in C major by Korngold. So this piece was originally written for the 1946 movie Deception. And fun fact, the main character in the movie uh, is a cellist, but the actor who played the main character didn't know how to play the cello. So what the movie did was they put a professional cellist behind the actor and had him put his arms through the actor's sleeves <laughs> to make it look like the actor was playing the cello. Uh, thankfully, I don't have a, prof a professional cellist behind me today because this piece is just really, really fun to play. And in the past few weeks, whenever I was feeling a little confused on how to play it, I would always reference the plot of the movie, which includes sabotage and murder and a cheating scandal. So you can imagine that the movie, the music, might be a little bit dramatic. Thank you.
So a couple of folks uh, asked me about uh, today's tie and um, what today's tie is known as foreshadowing. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, and I brought someone along here, a, a living prop, uh, to help me with the, with the foreshadowing. Uh, this is the wonderful Mickey Sawada, who you saw playing in the first half. <laughs> And you'll be seeing a lot more of her playing this evening when we have our annual Piano Palooza. So, Mickey, why don't you share with us some of the things that are happening tonight? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> well, well, I think we'll start with one pianist at one piano, and then it will turn into two pianists, maybe one piano, two pianos, four pianists at two pianos. <laughs> I don't know how much further it'll go on, but you can come and find out. <laughs> Um, I also have to say that I will be making my Piano Palooza debut this evening. <laughs> You'll just have to come and see. <laughs> so, I've also asked Mickey here to um, assist me to prove that, you know, this is a, a, blind, a blind selection here of this week's raffle winner. So, please do the honors, Mickey. Just one, yes. The winner is Taylor Lewis. That's a staff employee of ours, actually. Congratulations, Taylor. Hey, her money's as good as anyone else's, so congratulations, Taylor. <laughs> well, just to add that the Piano Palooza is, is the final concert of week three, and then that actually is the exact halfway point of the Institute. So you think of all the amazing music, all the amazing performances, spellbinding performances that we've heard so far, and we're just now at the halfway point. So there's lots and lots ahead, including the second half. So please enjoy it with all of us. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Vivian. I'm 16 years old. And today, with my amazing pianist, Miki, I will be playing the first movement of the Arpeggione Sonata by Franz Schubert. Now, when I first began playing this piece, I was really excited about learning it, and I thought it was really beautiful. But its technical difficulty wasn't really up to my expectations. Because I do like a challenge, I wanted something more exciting and impressive. But as I continued learning and practicing this piece, I came to find out that it actually is quite difficult. And this really helped me appreciate the beauty behind the detailed simplicity of not only this piece, but a lot of the music that I listen to. And I hope I can show that to you through my performance tonight. Thank you. Thank you. 
Good afternoon. My name is Nira Cardan, and this is my fourth time at the Heifetz Institute. Contrary to what your program might say, I actually turned 17 yesterday. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you. So I'm very excited that this beautiful piece is the first piece I will be performing as a 17-year-old. <laughs> I'd just like to start off by saying that the Stanton audience is the most enthusiastic I've ever had the opportunity to play for. So thank you for being here this afternoon. <laughs> I will be performing Sean du Menestrel by Alexander Glazunov. This piece was originally written for solo cello and orchestra, and this afternoon I will be playing with the best of the best, the Yun Lee Philharmonic. <laughs> um, Sean du Menestrel translates to minstrel song, and minstrels were these medieval entertainers, like acrobats, jugglers, magicians, musicians, etc. And one kind of minstrel was the minnesinger. Minnesingers were German lyric poets and singers, and they traditionally performed love songs. Seeing as the cello is the instrument closest to the human voice, I think it's very fitting that Glazunov chose the cello to sing his music. This piece is very romantic and even painful at times, and it pulls on my heartstrings every time I listen to it. Our rendition will hopefully do the same for you. Thank you.
Joy. I'm a 15-year-old cellist from New Jersey. Today I'll be playing the first movement from Cello Concerto in B minor by Dvorak. This piece has given me a lot of trouble, especially when I was learning it, because of its musical demands and technical challenges. But now that I'm coming back to it after a little bit, I feel like I can finally appreciate and enjoy the musical colors and textures of this piece. I hope you enjoy. Thank you.